Hi friends, welcome to Azure Content. This is part 32 in Azure Data Factory Real-Time Scenarios playlist. In this video, we are going to learn how to use Auth 2.0 token to access the secured resources using Azure Data Factory pipelines. So let's see the requirement in details. So basically, there are many kinds of REST APIs. For some of the REST APIs, we do not need any authentication to, in order to get the data from the API. But there are few secured resources which need certain kinds of authentication and that authentication can be done in several ways for example using some user id password or using managed identity or else using service principle and few rest apis also expects access token or bearer token in order to perform that authentication so in this particular video we are going to retrieve an auth 2.0 token which we are going to use that in order to access the resource and retrieve the data so this is the URL which will help us to generate the token and it will need our tenant ID. And as you can see, the request needs to be a post method. And then this is the request body that we need to provide in order to fetch the token. So here we need to provide tenant ID, client ID and client secret. And then grant type will be client credential and scope is graph.microsoft.com. So for this example, I'm trying to retrieve the data from Microsoft Graph API. So we will be using this as the scope and then this is the header that we will be using. Okay. So uh, by performing these steps, we will be getting the token that we need to use in order to access the Graph API. Okay. So the next step will be to use that token to get the data from the Graph API. So this will be the URL that we will be using and this is the format in which we need to pass the bearer token that we will be generating from our first step. Okay. So before jumping on the step to generate the token, we would need client ID and client secret. So this is nothing but the client ID and secret of our service principle. So first of all, we need to create the service principle from where we will get the client ID and client secret that we need to pass it here. Okay. So let me go to Azure portal and here we will search for app registration. So inside app registration, we can create our service principle. So first of all, we need to register an application. Let me give the name of this application as uh, unknown demo SPN underscore SPN. So this will be the name of the service principle. And then who can use this application? I'm going ahead with the default option that is single tenant and then simply click on register. So this will create a new application. So you can see a new demo underscore SPN has been created. Now we need to get the client ID and client secret. So if you see this overview page here, you can see the application ID is nothing but the client ID. So we can use this client ID and to generate the client secret, we need to go to this certificates and secrets. You can see there are three tabs and by default it was client secret tab as the open tab. So here you can create a new client secret. So that's what we need. So let me click on new client secret and let me give the description as uh, a new secret. And uh, I would choose the expiration date as six months, which is fine for me. Let me hit on add. So you can see this is the secret that we need. Let me copy this and keep it handy in a notepad. So let me give the name as client secret. And similarly, I will also note down client ID, which we will need further. So let me go back in the overview and you can see the client ID as well. Let me copy that. And here we can use client ID. So we have both the things handy. And the other thing that we require, as you can see, is tenant ID, which is missing for this URL. So let me go to overview page again and here you can see the tenant ID is mentioned. So let me copy that as well and let me go to notepad and keep the tenant ID handy as well. Tenant ID. Yeah, so we have everything in place. So now let me use these IDs. Let me copy this URL and then we will just simply replace tenant ID. In this one and similarly 
in the request body as well we need these informations so let me copy that and let me replace all the information so this will go in tenant id and then client id and client secret here we need to replace it yeah so our request body is also ready now let's go to azure portal and let's go to adf and start creating the pipeline so first of all we will drag a web activity where we need to pass all this information to make a rest api call to generate the access token so here let's go to settings and this is the place where we need the url so let me copy that so this is the url let me copy it and keep it here and then method would be post method as we have seen in the presentation this is a post url and then we need to give the request body as this is a post method so request body should not be empty so let's get the request body which we have framed using all the information so let me put it here and then let's give the header as content type equals to application url encoded so let me copy that so we are good now if we debug this pipeline we are expecting that we would get the auth 2.0 access token that we would be able to use in order to access the secured resources so let me debug this so let's wait for the pipeline to be completed yeah so you can see web activity has successfully completed let's check the output so you can see the output we have got the access token so this is what we will use further in the pipeline and the token type is bearer okay so let me keep it handy let me copy it till the end and again let me paste it in the notepad so this is the access token that we have generated just now okay so we are good now so now we can use this access token which is present in the access underscore token property in the output json so to refer to this token anywhere in the pipeline we would need the expression as activity output dot access token to get this token okay so instead of that we would assign this value into a variable so let me create a variable named token and let it be string type and then let's use set variable activity after this web activity to simply assign the value of token into this variable okay so we would need output of web activity and then just now we have seen inside output json the property in which access token is present is access underscore token so we are good let me debug it to see if the variable also gets assigned with the same access token value let's wait so it's completed let's check the output so you can see now our variable named token is having this value which is nothing but the access token value so we can use this variable anywhere in the pipeline in order to use the access token okay so now we will simply use another web activity as we have discussed let me go into slides so here you can see in order to get the data from graph api we need to use this url let me copy that and here let me paste it and the method would be get method and for header we would need authorization equals to bearer and then we need to provide the token so let me give authorization and here we need bearer and then we need to provide the token so if you have the token handy as a hard coded value you can simply give like this but in our case we have the token in the variable so let me add the dynamic content and here we will simply give bearer and then we will use this variable which is having the token so you can see this at the rate went at the first place let me make it uh, in a correct format so you can see we have used string interpolation to convert this uh, value into string format so now it will read it as bearer and then this dynamic expression will be replaced by the token which is present in this variable okay when we execute this pipeline so uh, we are good let me hit on debug and let's wait for this execution to be completed and then we will see that we are getting data from this graph api or not so 
yeah so pipeline has been successfully completed let's check the output so you can see we are able to get the data from graph api so this is how we can retrieve auth2 access token using adf and we can use the same in order to access some secured resources so let me go back to the presentation so just for an example i have used the url in real time you might have some other url from which you need to retrieve the data using auth2 access token so you can use the same process in some cases it might require some additional permissions to the service principal might be some read or write access or subscription level permissions so you need to figure that out but otherwise the process would be the same in order to retrieve the token and to use the token and for that you need to pass the token using this syntax so that's it for this video guys i hope you find the video helpful please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you